It's four o'clock and I'd like to call the City Planning Commission meeting for May 12th to order. Would the uh, planner please call the roll? Mayor Vandersteen. Here. Alderman Boren. Here. Brian Sazma. Here. Jerry Jones. Here. Marilyn Montemeyer. Here. David Huffman. Here. Don Sfiton. Here. Seven are present. Thank you very much. Um, please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, and indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Um, next is the introduction of uh, committee members and staff. I'll start on that end with David. David Hoffman, citizen member. Jerry Jones, vice chairman, citizen member. Mice Vandersteen, mayor and chairman. Chad Pelishek, planning director. Steve Slavoski from the planning department. Uh, Ryan Sazman, department of public works. John Sweetman, Pelishek member. And online. Marilyn oh. Montemayor, citizen. Alderman Jim Boren, uh, I'm uh, 10th District, I'm the Alderman on the Plan Commission. Well, welcome everyone, thank you for those introductions. Um, does anyone on the uh, Plan Commission have any uh, potential uh, conflict of interest with the items before us today? Okay. He hearing none, uh, next item is to move on and approve the minutes from our Planning Commission meeting on April 28th. I entertain a motion. Thank you for that motion and support to approve those minutes. Is there any discussion? Hearing no discussion, all those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Uh, next, we'll move on to items for discussion and possible action. Item 3.1 is a conditional use and variance application by Van Wyck Auto Inc to permit auto sales and display at Doug's Auto Service located at 1821 Cooper Avenue. Turn it over to Steve for a report on this item. All right, thanks, Mayor. Uh, ben Van Wick is here, um, the new owner of Doug's Auto Service. And um, Ben is looking to add some auto sales at Doug's Auto. Um, Doug's Auto has been in business since 1977. Um, the applicant indicates that they're proposing the auto sales because he's had a number of people looking for vehicles over the years and since he doesn't have the ability to sell vehicles, he has to pass them on to other customers and can lose those customers and have them have their cars and things like that serviced at other um, auto repair dealerships. So what uh, uh, Mr. Van Wick is looking to do is to have the ability to sell three vehicles on that site. Um, if we could go to the Please. site plan. <clears throat> I don't know how oh. we get to the... Okay. Anyways, you can see where the three vehicles are located on Calumet Drive on the, on the map that you have before you. And that's where, um, and that's where uh, uh, they would like to have the vehicles along Calumet Drive. So, so he's looking at the ability to have three indicates that there's an ability to have um, quite a bit of parking on site. And there's also some spaces in the neighboring business next door that you can see on the, the uh, street to the west is called Cole's Court. And there's an ability to utilize some of the parking uh, at that on uh, the neighboring property to the south. Um, the, the only concern that staff really had with the proposal is the parking. Um, I have not heard from anyone uh, that we sent out notice to in terms of any sort of concerns, uh, neighbor concerns or anything of that matter. Um, and other than that, there was a few items on the Coles Court side of the building um, that there were some tires and just some uh, miscellaneous debris. I've spoken to uh, Mr. Van Wyck about that and he told me that there's an ability that he is in the process of screening and doing some screening behind the building that all of that stuff will be removed from the street. So other than that, staff was recommending approval of the proposal with the conditions you have before you. Steve, thanks for that staff report. Mr. Van Wyck, would you like to add anything to that? Okay. Commissioners? Um, Mayor? 
Uh, go ahead, Jim. Uh, if somebody hasn't made a motion, I will make a motion to approve subject to conditions. Thank you for that motion. Is there a sec second? And Jerry seconds it. Jerry, did you have some comments? Okay, please go ahead. There we go. No. There we go. <laughs> okay, um, just a quick question for you. With the number of these stalls and spots that are on the lot, how many vehicles are you working on as far as repair goes at any one time, in addition to the three vehicles that you'll be listed for sale? Yeah. Uh, yeah, please. Step right up to the podium, thank you. Um, it definitely ranges on the day and how busy we are. Um, we've seen upwards of maybe 15 to 16 vehicles at one time that we work on. Mm -hmm. um, I, I did count the number of spots that our lot allows and it's about 20 at, at max capacity. Um, plus we also have some parking for our employee vehicles in the uh, adjoining business behind us. Um, so we've, that's four vehicles we've eliminated out of the parking. So um, I'm also in the middle of trying to purchase another shop in order to expand and get some more room. Okay. So, but with what we have right now, um, definitely the, the maximum amount of cars that we've had come in for repair, we've been able to work with it. So, and, and you'll have the new cars in the same spot every time, I'm gonna guess. Correct? Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna allot them in a certain spot in the parking lot for sale. Okay. Um, if they're getting worked on pre-sale before they're up for sale, then I will. Uh, they might be in other spots, but when they're for sale, they will be in those in those places. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Is there any other discussion, uh, uh, Ryan? Yeah, question. How many? How many? Do you, do you have to use the the on-street parking at all for your business right now? I do, <clears throat> um, just to make it easier for us, um, but. <clears throat> We have about four to five spots that we can use next to our building. Um, so we mainly use them. Um, I, we used to park all over the place and I've been trying to change that. So um, maybe one or two cars might get scattered in other spots, but majority of them, they, get, they stay in our lot. So after you're done working on them, you drop them off out in the street or do people like in the morning drop them off out in the street to get worked on? Most of them drop them off in the parking lot. Okay. Yep. So we tell them to drop them off in the parking lot, remove them if we have to. Um, it, it's a small area, but we stay on top of it. And my other question is for Steve, how many letters did you send out for this? Um, <clears throat> probably about, looks like about 16. And you had no negative no, feedback no, from anybody? If, uh, you know, and, and, and you know, there's definite. Can, can can you guys go back to the screens, please? And you can you can kind of see that you know on Cole's court in this area, um, you know that there is a little bit of parking and things like that that does take place in that area. So all of those neighbors in this general vicinity, this area across the street, you know, so there was about 16 properties that received um, letters of this and I did not get a single call from anyone on this matter. Okay, thank you very yep, thank much. Thank you. Ben, don't you also charge a fee for uh, people to pick up vehicles I and do. things like that? You may yep. wanna explain that. I as charge well. a $15 a day storage fee. So if somebody, it, it gets people to come pick up their cars. We rarely get one left over and I have gotten to a point where I do park it at my personal house if it becomes a problem with somebody leaving a car around. So, okay. Thank you. Other discussion, uh, Don Sweeten. Uh, would there be any changes in signage? Um, I actually just had new signs put up last fall, um, so I I don't see any changing in signage. Um, I, I'm not. I'm still sticking more to the repair side of it than I am the car sales. It's not going to be my main source of income there. So this is just to expand a little bit. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any other discussion? Okay, we have a motion on the floor. Um, 
All those in favor of the motion to uh, approve the conditional use and variance application to be signified by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Good luck with your project. Thank you. Item 3.2 is a preliminary plat approval for Stony Brook, Stone Brook uh, Crossing, edition number one, located south of Fox Meadows subdivision between uh, South Business Drive and Menning Road. Steve. All right. Um, Ross Warner is online. So this was a preliminary plat that the Plan Commission had looked at in, I believe it was February. And um, one of the uh, conditions of that approval of that preliminary plat had to do with the city park located at the southeast corner of the subdivision. And there was uh, a thought of potentially swapping that property and creating a new city park elsewhere in the subdivision. Um, that kind of went to Marina Parks and Forestry and there was some, uh, not everyone was receptive to that idea. So uh, the Werners elected to uh, uh, just remove that and keep the park where it is. Uh, there's discussions with the city in terms of Outlot 3, which is located at um, the southeast corner of Stonebrook. Actually, yeah, the southwest corner of Stonebrook and Menning Road. So that would be Outlot 3, which would be uh, uh, worked with, with the city and uh, eventually uh, the parks department in May do some improvements to that park. So that was kind of the switch is with the subdivision itself, everything else is virtually the same to what the plan commission had looked at previously. It's just that that park uh, is now gonna be at the southeast corner and it's not included as part of the subdivision. So that being said, there's uh, uh, 44 lots in the subdivision that are zoned MR8, which allow for single family and two family um, developments. There's 87 lots that will be for single family uh, subdivision or single family uh, dwellings. And then at the northwest corner of the property, it's lot 145 that remain neighborhood <clears throat> commercial and that uh, there's no uh, formal development of that at this point in time, but it is a mixed use zone that would allow for residential as well as some commercial. Um, there's the plan basically, as you can see, is to have two main or one main entrance uh, road uh, that would come from Business Drive and then one that would come from Menning. There's five cul-de-sacs in the subdivision and then uh, another primary road is um, uh, Rimrock Road. Um, other than that, they're creating two, three outlots. Two of the outlots are used, gonna be used for city uh, stormwater ponds for uh, storm drainage in the facility. And again, outlot three is gonna be for that uh, uh, half acre for that neighborhood uh, park. Um, the only other thing to mention to the plan commission to be aware of is that the streets in the subdivision are not going to be a typical city street uh, spec <clears throat> specification in terms of curb, gutter, and sidewalk. This is going to be um, uh, pavement with uh, ditches. And in and the main roads, you would have a four-foot wide pedestrian uh, pathway along the roads. So other than that, the subdivision is basically identical to what you had seen previously, and staff was recommending approval. Thank you for that report, Steve. Mr. Werner, did you want to add anything to Steve's report on the changes to this uh, plat for the subdivision? No, I think Steve did a good job of uh, capturing the what's been updated. Yeah, I agree with Steve. It's primarily the same as what was reviewed back in February with the, the main change being the park. Okay, thank you. Commissioners, any discussion? Otherwise, I'd entertain a motion. I have one question. I'll go ahead, Marilyn. Um, what is meant by two-family home? Marilyn, that would mean that they could, in, in that neighborhood residential, they could either do a single family or, say, for example, a duplex up and down side by side. Okay. Um, so that's what the two-family refers to. 
an owner living in one or don't we make that kind of rule? Um, nope, that would be up to the owner who purchased that property and then they would have the ability to, I guess they could rent it, they could condo it, um, but no, there's nothing that says that it necessarily needs to be home ownership. Now, I'm not sure, Ross, if you can address that, if there's any type of uh, 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 covenants that restrict that, but maybe you could address that from your end. No, I mean, at this time, we have made no specific decisions, but yeah, it's what you said. It'd be the side-by-side, -side, two family, um, duplexes for primarily the, the, those two cul-de-sacs would be reserved for those types of um, houses. Thank you. Thank you for the information. Uh, Mayor, I have some questions. Go ahead, Jim. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Mr. Warner, I, uh, on the on the 87 single-family <coughs> homes, what are your price points going to be on those homes? Yep. So generally speaking, our homes for single-family are between 250000 to 450000 um, is where our homes that we build throughout the county currently are. And then the other the other forty four, I guess those were those those were some of the uh, possibly the two families. Is that generally in the same price range? Yeah, so two families do start normally a little bit less, or probably about two thirty five to three hundred fifty thousand per unit, uh, so per site. So they would be a little bit less, but um, not substantially different. And I have a then I have a uh, another question. The the stormwater ponds are those going to be? Uh, I looked at the map. Uh, earlier today, but uh, are the stormwater ponds just going to be independent, or are you planning to actually build houses around the pond? Um, those two outlots would be just the pond, and there'd be no houses on those two lots specifically. Okay. So, but there would be lots adjacent to them, but with you know adequate distance to um, not be truly on the pond. Thank you. I just wanted to add that uh, I represent District 10 on the far south side. This is a very exciting development for uh, the far south side of Sheboygan, Sheboygan having, a, having a residential subdivision and also the property taxes that this development is going to generate for the city is going to be a huge help to our annual budget. So I fully support this and I wish you a lot of luck on the project, Mr. Werner. Thank you. Thank you for those comments. With that, I'd entertain a motion. Make a motion to approve subject to staff recommendations. A second. Thank you for that motion and support to approve the project uh, with staff recommendations. Is there one, any other discussion before we vote? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Chair votes aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Thank you very much for your project, Mr. Werner. Next, we'll go on to item 3.3, which is RO number one of 2021, approving the Capital Improvements Program as recommended by the Capital Improvements Commission for the program period of 2021 through 2025 and adopting the uh, program for implementation. Steve, you have anything on this or Chad? So I don't know if we want to, if you chair, if we could ask Daryl to come forward and just talk about what was approved. Thank you, Daryl. As, as many of you uh, plan commissioners are aware, uh, this process uh, kicks off uh, in uh, early spring uh, with the department heads identifying uh, updates to their prior five-year capital improvement plan. Uh, following their uh, submittal, um, again, the key is to try and create a level uh, purchasing uh, over the five different years. Um, based upon your many of you being involved in this, uh, in the past, uh, also a key consideration is the amount of debt needed to support uh, these projects, whether it be capital uh, equipment purchases or, or uh, actual pro construction related projects. Um, the next step is a presentation to the Capital Improvement Commission. Uh, they typically meet twice. A presentation was made by each department head uh, regarding their projects. And of course, the 2025 being the new year, all those projects uh, typically are new for consideration. Uh, there were some uh, new, there was additional information provided at those meetings. 
uh, specifically regarding uh, Shoreline Metro and some of the Federal CARES Act funding to allow for uh, many of the originally planned 2024, 2025, moving them up and uh, occurring in, in either 2021 or 2022. Uh, also, the expectation is uh, many of those purchases will be done 100% with CARES Act funding. Normally, it's an 80-20 split. Um, so that uh, definitely helped uh, on the total uh, debt that's being recommended uh, in front uh, before you. Uh, the changes that were made uh, by the Capital Improvements Commission uh, are highlighted in orange if you have the spreadsheet uh, uh, that you're able to pull up. Uh, the, um, I'm trying to think if there was one more change. I think that was substantially the change uh, to the five-year capital improvement plan as presented to the capital improvement. Uh, so following your review, it will go to the Common Council for their final consideration and ultimate action on it. Uh, in regards to the amount of debt uh, necessary for general obligation, again, there's, there's additional debt that is either TID or that is user fee paid uh, by the utilities. Um, the 20.4 20, 20. million is uh, $800,000 higher uh, than the five-year capital improvement program that was presented to you a year ago. So slightly more debt uh, associated with this project, but averaging a little over $4 million uh, on any given year. Uh, any questions? Darrell, I thought there was an amendment that was necessary for transit. Uh, is that all corrected, or is there still something that needs to be done uh, before it goes on to the, the city council? Uh, great question. I'm trying to recall if the commission at their second meeting already made that uh, substitution as part of their recommendation. No, I think that's still necessary. The, the you know, utilizing the CARES Act related information as far as 100% funding and moving it to an earlier year. Uh, mayor's asking whether in the final recommendation from the Capital Improvement Commission, whether they took care of that or whether uh, that responsibility lies now with the uh, Plan Commission. Derek, could you maybe explain the, uh, the change that was made? I thought it was taken up at the... I think they discussed it, but the documents that they uh, approved, I don't think included all of the changes. So if you can uh, just describe the change that took place, then we can maybe uh, amend that on the floor here. Okay. Um, as as uh, City Administrator Hufflin uh, explained, there was a couple projects that we bumped up. Um, one related to some improvements to our facility uh, for calendar year 2022, I think it was. Um, we bumped that up for next year so that we could take advantage of uh, these CARES Act uh, federal dollars that are available for transit. Uh, we did receive uh, just under $3.5 million that's uh, going to offset uh, lost revenues and some of our expenses in our operation budget, but then we'll have some opportunity to use uh, some of those funds for uh, capital projects as well. Um, one of the other projects that we had uh, allocated was for paratransit vehicles, and we had talked about um, doing two vehicles instead of one, and that was at, I think, $180,000 uh, project. The other one I talked about with our facility changes was 200000 so we allocated um, uh, $380,000 to uh, CARES Act projects for uh, calendar year 2021 uh, instead of using uh, local dollars uh, or a mixture of local and federal dollars for those projects in 2022. Mayor Vanderstein, yes. uh, I, I, think the, I think your recollection is in regards to uh, specifically the, or, the Orange 2 uh, in 2021. Uh, we had a busted formula in our spreadsheet and as a result, there was an error, and so uh, the orange reflects uh, an administrative change to be consistent with the individual project pages, uh, and, and so that was identified after the Capital Improvement Commission met, 
and we wanted to identify that uh, before you as plan commissioners. Okay, do we need an amendment to make that correction? I, I think we do. Okay, thank you for that information, Derek. And um, but go ahead, Chad. If you look at the spreadsheet that's attached to the RO, though, it has a it has the numbers that Derek actually talked about. Yeah, this is a different item that uh, that Daryl's talking about. Ch Ch Chad, do you have? I I can't see. So, uh, it, is it, does it have one point nine nine? It's got uh, a uh, on it's for got, for debt, or I'm sorry for grants for 2021. It well, it doesn't get into the specifics as to how they're funded. It just talks about the projects. Right, but it, yeah, it was the summary spreadsheet, uh, which again had an error in, in its formula uh, on page one of the spreadsheet. It's got it's got count it's got an updated orange at one point nine nine. Nine zero four zero. Yeah, for I think other, for county, state, and federal grants. Yeah, previously, I think the capital improvement uh, in commission, uh, the the spreadsheet which they uh, reviewed and took action on uh, the grants was one point six one nine, uh, as opposed to um, that number should be one point one million nine hundred ninety nine thousand oh four zero, and the. Uh, reduced amount for general obligation uh, borrowed funds should be four million two hundred forty one thousand three sixty seven. That's what's in the spreadsheet. Okay. Okay. Uh, so we need a motion first of all to approve the capital improvements program. Make a motion to approve. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. And then I need an amendment to uh, do what Daryl suggested and what's now in the documents for us to approve. It's in there though. Yeah, but it wasn't when it went through the last one. So we need an amendment to change it to this and then we'll pr approve it and send it on to council. Okay, seems like, okay. I'll move for that amendment. A second. Okay, we have the amendment on the floor. Daryl just uh, articulated the numbers. Is there any other discussion on the amendment? Seeing none, all those in favor of the amendment, please signify by saying aye. 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 Chair votes aye. Opposed? Mm -hmm. Very good. The amendment passes. So now we're voting on the uh, main motion to approve the program as amended. Mayor, Mayor, Mayor I Mike. Have a question for Daryl. Go ahead, Jim. Uh, Daryl, so the bottom line for 2021 then is the uh, $4,241,367? Correct. That is the corrected amount. Uh, instead of the 4.6 million. And we'll, we will be borrowing that probably around this time next year, similar to what we just did for some of the 2020 projects? That is correct. All right, thank you. Is there any other discussion on the motion? Go uh, ahead, Daryl. Yes, Mayor, I want to say something. Go ahead, Marilyn. Oh, thank you. Um, Good work on the part of the Capital Improvements Commission and the administration and Derek on using that CARES money. Uh, good work. Thank you. And then Daryl? I just want to confirm again uh, the, the changes that you voted on as far as an amendment. Uh, the bottom line for spending in 2021 remains the same for the spreadsheet that uh, the C Capital Improvement Commission and that was in your packet, again, it was just those two numbers uh, are corrected. Okay, thank you. I'll, then we'll take a vote. All those in favor of the motion as amended, signify by saying aye. 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 Chair votes aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. And I appreciate all the work, Daryl, uh, that you did on this, as well as all of our department heads. Thank you. Our next meeting is set for May 28th. And Jerry? Move to adjourn. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Yep. All those in favor of adjournment, please signify by saying aye. 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 We stand adjourned. Thank you for your time. Thank you.